virtual open world with you guys. Um, so, so we're here with uh, Satish Lakshmanan, who's uh, in, at QLogic, a very knowledgeable. Satish, great to have you back on the Q. Thank, thanks, Dave, great to be here. Very knowledgeable individual about uh, a lot of things. We're going to talk about convergence. Um, you're in the host solutions group, right? And, That's right. Uh, which is a, a real core of QLogic's business. A lot of people might not know QLogic. I mean, QLogic essentially builds you know, the glue between the servers and the storage and the network and, and makes all that data flow and, and makes it such that we don't lose the data, which is very important, and it gets there fast. So QLogic makes IP that essentially you know, sits in between those key components and um, has a lot of secret sauce to make sure that data's reliable and secure and, uh, and, and as I say, fast. But, uh, so we're going to talk about convergence, uh, a, t a favorite topic of ours. What do we mean by convergence? You know, bringing together storage and networking and servers. You know, how that fits into virtualization and cloud. Well, I mean, so. QLogic last year, Dave, I mean, at least from my perspective, really, you guys moved the, the needle on your brand. I mean, I think QLogic last yeah. year uh, really emerged out of the card business and established your, your brand as a data center brand with the switches and the technology. So congratulations. Um, and you guys are always in a horse race with the OEM deals. You guys had great success last year. And I thought it was a great year. You yeah. guys did great. And so, how do you top that? What's next? I mean, you know, like, so tell if, us. If you think about Keylogic's pedigree and history, you know, we've been more of a fiber channel storage uh, infrastructure company. And with convergence happening, you know, our opportunity to grow, whether it's 10 gigabit Ethernet, whether it's InfiniBand, whether it's FCOE, which essentially is uh, block-based storage over 10 gigabit Ethernet, these are all net new growth areas for Keylogic. So I think the opportunities out there, if you follow some of uh, the in industry analyst reports, if you look at the growth opportunity for just pure 10 gig, out in 2014, if you look at Delaro, for example, or Crehan Research, you know, we have the opportunity to pretty much double our TAM, the total available market out there through the products that QLogic bring, brings to the enterprise customer base. So I think the opportunity is there for us. The challenge will be to produce the right products that end users want, the right products that OEMs are willing to qualify and embed in their portfolio and uh, it's for us to capitalize on that growth market. So we talk about convergence, we talk about the bringing together of servers and storage and, and networking um, into a single technology. So are people doing that? Why are they doing that? What are the, what are the reasons for doing that? Sure, a good, great question. I think, yeah, convergence is definitely happening. Uh, if you turn the clock back to three, four years ago when Cisco and QLogic and EMC and, uh, and all the other partners in the ecosystem introduced FCOE, you know, people were skeptical about it. People understood, at least on paper, the value proposition of FCOE and, and the benefits that it brought from a total cost of ownership perspective, reducing the cabling and comp complexity at the edge. And people now are starting to embrace that technology and actually deploy it, uh, not just in their development environment, but in actual, in actual production data centers. In fact, a few months ago, they, we published a case study um, along with a healthcare customer for the healthcare vertical, Payformance. They're key to you know, billing type of applications when it comes to uh, healthcare facilities. So Payformance actually adopted QLogic CNA technology tried to basically test and evaluate the value proposition of FCOE initially in their development environment, and I've gone up around and deployed it, and I'm actually running traffic today over FCOE. So it's happening, uh, albeit maybe a little slower than expected, but I think the, the Q, position of QLogic right now is a very good one, and I've used this um, metaphor earlier, I mean, we kind of love the, like the arms dealer. You know, we, we want people to embrace convergence if that's the problem that they want to solve in the data center. But at, at the end of the day, if FC works for them and continues to work for them, they should go ahead and deploy a fiber channel, native fiber channel. What about the cloud? Well, let's talk about the cloud. We're at EMC, cloud meets big data. What's, what's your cloud strategy? What's the, the unique value proposition that you bring to cloud computing? So, great question, Dave. So, if you think about QLogic as a technology provider, so our, we provide our controller chips to EMC, as a matter of fact, that power their platforms and allow native fiber channel or FCOE connectivity to the fabric and to the back end. So we are part and parcel of EMC's big data and cloud strategy. But if I were to use a metaphor for cloud and I parse it down to the three layers, which is you know, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or application as a service, and I think about the adaptive convergence technology and capabilities we introduced into your product in October last year, 
So what we allow, so if you look at an infrastructure as a service customer, for example, today in the cloud model, and if they want to be able to support multiple protocols simultaneously in the same, same hardware, they can do so through QLogic. So different customers, whether they want native fiber channel connectivity for backend, if they want pure ethernet connectivity for the front and mid-tier of, of the data center, if they want InfiniBand for high performance computing, they can get all of that through QLogic technology. So we provide enabling technologies to infrastructure as a service uh, customers. Let's talk about platform as a service. So we support multiple you know, VMware, Microsoft operating systems. We're tested and validated across all those operating systems. So we're in a great position to be able to provide platform as a service vendors, you know, that abstraction layer, so to speak, from underlying infrastructure. And we're tested and val validated, and today we ship more than 10 million fiber channel ports. So really proven implementations across multiple technologies. Let's talk application as a service. So for application as a service providers, you know, virtualization puts a lot more burden on them when it comes to pure I.O. performance. They don't want I.O. to become a bottleneck when it comes to you know, serving applications. And as you virtualize and put more applications in the same physical server or physical storage, you basically want to make sure I.O. doesn't become the bottleneck. So our technology, which allows for I.O. virtualization, whether it's NIC partitioning or whether it's industry standard virtualization like SRIOV, through the deployment of that, through the deployment of full offload. And IO, and IO, and IO is use. hot too, because I mean, look at Flash, right? I mean, I yeah. think Fla the Flash movement points to what your value proposition has been for years. Got to make that IO work. Yep. And, and I think that data center focus is really key. And, and what I'm wondering is, how does that extend out into the, um, the chip side? Because the, you guys have that chip vision, the ASIC vision, how does that all come together? Can you give us an update on that? Because that integration yeah. point is the number one thing people want to know about. So what our vision right now is to support multiple protocols simultaneously one piece of hardware. There are certainly development efficiencies involved in making that decision from QLogic's perspective, right? We don't want to accept, have different product lines, different architectures supporting fundamentally the you know, IOs. So we believe in having a single chip that supports multiple protocols, whether it's native fiber channel, FCOE, iSCSI, block-based storage, or file-based storage over TCP IP. We want to be able to power that through one, one chip. So it's convergence, true convergence from a hardware and software perspective, and QLogic completely embraces it. You talked about uh, 10 million fiber channel ports out there. That's, yeah. I thought the fi thought fiber channel was dead, Satish. <laughs> is fiber channel alive and well? Oh, it's a great question. I don't think fiber channel is dead at all. Uh, you know, recently you saw a spate of uh, announcements about 16 gig fiber channel. QLogic is continuing to invest in 16 gig fiber channel. We have several OEM design wins and products under development right now that I unfortunately can't publicly talk about. So it's definitely not dead. We're investing in 32 gig fiber channel. So I think it's going to be healthy and it will continue for a long time. Yeah, I, um, I hosted, as you know, a panel out at SNW and, and, and the Fiber Channel Industry Association was, was very active in that panel. It's got a, a, got a strong roadmap. Um, I joke because a lot of people will say, oh, Fiber Channel, it's dead. But you know, if you want to save mission critical data or store mission critical data, you're Absolutely. more likely going to store it on well, a we, Fiber we've Channel. We've been having a lot of conversations, network. Dave and I have been having a lot of conversations about specifically I.O. in context to the IPO of Fusion I.O. and everyone's talking about it, SSD flash as the innovation in storage. Multi-cores. And, and it know. brings up a lot of philosophical conversations around the future of the data center. And you know, my vision is a little bit different than some of the old school analysts that are out there. Um, no offense, I'm not Dave's one of them, but a lot of Dave's uh, friends, um, Steve like Duplessis, who? like Steve <laughs> Duplessis, um, are old school. And my philosophy is that people are like looking at Facebook as a one-off. I don't see Facebook as a one-off. I think Facebook will look like a lot of the data centers of the future. A lot of open source, a lot of big data, a lot of I.O., a lot of applications. So that's your wheelhouse. Yep. And you guys are playing in, I know you can't talk about it, but from what I've heard, a lot of the big data centers like Facebook and Google. Yep. Um, what's your, how do you talk about that new environment? How does QLogic see that? So, so I think I think you're exactly right. Um, it's it's a different a tr it's different from the traditional view of the data center. Uh, our participation in it. If we're an infrastructure company, as you you know as you mentioned when we first talked about Keylogic. So our desire is to sell infrastructure to whoever, however they deploy it, right? So that's why I talked about our participation in the cloud. It's whether it's you know private cloud, public cloud, hybrid model. At the end of the day, as long as they use Keylogic technology whatever protocols that they want to support, we are willing to support in a single common piece of hardware. So for us, it's providing all You're not getting in the way. 
We're not getting in the way. We want to enable, provide all those enabling technologies that lets them deploy and use applications how they see fit in a virtualized or a non-virtualized environment. So how about innovation? Um, you know, where, where is QLogic's roadmap taking it from an innovation standpoint? Where are you putting your, your efforts and, and you've done a good job of differentiating. Um, you know, you've, you made a really big push to, to own your IP, to, to invest in silicon. You, you, uh, you've, you've made some acquisitions to get into the Lanham motherboard business. What's next in terms of innovation? So in terms of innovation for us, we believe in having a single architecture for all our products. So we, we, you talked about the Netson acquisition that brought in you know, 10 gigabit Ethernet IP. What we have done is we basically integrated all of that on a single platform, single piece of hardware. We can support multiple protocols, whether it's a native fiber channel, 10 gigabit Ethernet, which is TCP IP, FCOE, and iSCSI. So that's the first piece of it. From an innovation perspective, which is the question you asked, I think there are basically four pillars where we are investing. You know, we want to make sure that you can support multiple protocols in one piece of hardware. We want to make sure that we have full offload capability, so it's not you chewing up CPU resources, but basically we're offloading all of that I/O protocol to the to the hardware, so CPU and memory resources available for applications. We want to make sure that we provide the right security for cloud environment, right? There's so much discussion today, you know, these days in the EMC world about cloud, but security is definitely a big concern for the end customer. So we believe in providing IPsec-based security for the TCP IP or vice SCSI traffic. Future products will support FCSP, both encryption and authentication. So we want to make sure we embrace security technologies. And of course, virtualization. IO virtualization is something that we're focusing on. And, um, and we want to make sure that we are able to provide either single root IO virtualization or NPAR, which is QLogic tech developed technology that provides a lot of OE differentiation to OEMs because it doesn't depend on a switch for VM to VM communication. And also, um, we support OEM proprietary IO virtualization technologies like Flex10. Yeah, so um, you've always had a culture of, of, of R&D, innovation, you guys have been very very proud of that. And your, your, your former CEO is really well known as a visionary, yep. right? HK is really re widely respected. Um, John mentioned up front that you guys had a good year in terms of just transitioning the brand. You know, you, you uh, basically announced the deal where you were second sourcing um, uh, switches to, to HP, mm -hmm. kind of popping Cisco out, of course, HP and Cisco right. are involved in a urinary Olympics and everybody knows that well, but so that, that was fortuitous <laughs> for you. You're not viewed as a competitor to right. HP as Cisco is. Um, how's that FC switch business going and what's the future hold there? Oh, a great question. I think, I think it's done very well. So if you follow some of Delaro's market share reports, you know, the last two, three years, we've steadily gained market share. We're at 16% of market for fixed switch ports. So overall, our switch business, I think, is doing really well. Our EMC Select actually carries our switch portfolio as well, so they can fulfill that to the end user. So there's a lot of opportunity for us through the different channels that we have, the OEM channel, where OEMs like HP have embraced our edge switch technology. We'll continue to fulfill that. EMC Select will continue to fulfill it. And QLogic brand through QLogic's go-to-market. Um, I, so I think there's tremendous opportunity for not just fiber channel switching, but also for InfiniBand products, host and switch products. Excellent, so QLogic transitioning the, the brand, leading in CNAs, um, you know, leading in FCOE, innovating, talking about you know, the, the, the pillars of innovation. Satish, great as always to have you on theCUBE. Thanks very much for coming on. It's great, for, uh, great. to meet you guys and All thanks right. for the time. Great to see you again. So,